It's baffled scholars for two millennia. It is a puzzle made of multi-dimensional elements, an enigma with roots that reach back to the dawning of time, perhaps before. Daniel explained part of it. Ezekiel and Isaiah had glimpses into it. John saw it all for the time of the end. That time is now. Join Derek and Sharon Gilbert on a journey that spans the course of history, from Eden to Mount Hermon, from Hermon to Babel, from Babel to Rome, from Rome to the cross, and from there to us. Biblical prophecy is coming true before your eyes, and to understand it, you must discern the times both then and now. It's time to unravel the threads of this all-encompassing prophetic paradox. It's time to unravel Revelation. Welcome to Unraveling Revelation. I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Sharon Gilbert, and guess what? You are in our, what do we call this room? The family room? I guess so. <laughs> this is Studio G3. <laughs> <laughs> We've decided to try something brand new, so if this doesn't work, you'll never know it happened, because we may just start again and go back to the old room. But we kind of wanted something a little bit warmer, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more sort of a taste of what it's like to be in our home, yeah. and we love this room because it's got the fireplace. It does, and... Decorated in a very homey country style, which I've said before, when I was young, I would have thought was just really old fashioned and boring. But I now know I... what she's mixing patterns. Oh, and, and colors. Oh Boy, my when gosh. I was when I was a young man just out of college, everything had to be white and gray, very Swedish industrial. It's and, gone back to that way, too. A lot of white and gray I notice in uh, homes that are for sale. But uh, there was a long time there where it's like 90 shades of beige. No, 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 no. Color. Color and lots of family photos on the walls. Ah, yes. Lots of, you know, I, I love this picture. It's one of my favorite pictures of me with our, our daughter, daddy-daughter dance. Oh, yeah. Back when she was young. And so, yeah, it was... Uh, She's still uh, young to me. <laughs> <laughs> the older I get, the more young people I find around me. I know, you start calling them kids. <laughs> Funny how that works. But uh, yeah, we're going to record this Unraveling Revelation in here today. And then after this, and this is one reason I wanted to sort of mix it up and try a different setting, is because after we record this program, you and I are going to record our combined uh, conference presentation right. for the Defender Conference. Right. And uh, this will be uh, really interesting. As, as always, Sharon has come up with something, a, a really fascinating topic that uh, uh, through, let's see, May... June, July, August, through the middle of August, you have the opportunity to see at DefenderConference.com. So do take advantage of that. It'll and be, you get um, other stuff, too. You get access to the, the Defender films, don't you? You do. You do. All five of the documentary films from Skywatch Films. So um, in addition to the conference presentations, you can find all that information at DefenderConference.com. But uh, yeah, the, uh, th this is a really charming setting. I love this red chair. This was a flea store find, so a flea you market know, find. So. And our good friend Wes Fall. Yes, helped us move the helped chair. Helped move the chair. It was sort of a deal where, what did you do here? In fact, that furniture, uh, that uh, love seat, was also a flea market uh, find. So yeah, we we love uh, repurposing things. Nearly and, uh, everything yeah. in this house is repurposed from some Goodwill store or flea market or somewhere. Uh, we love doing that. We feel like it's being good, good stewards. But you know, the Lord has a practice of repurposing humans, too. Yeah, we, uh, you know, are often... You'll notice, by the way, I'm barefoot, so don't, don't, don't say anything. <laughs> That's typical for, for uh, us around the house. Anyway, At least I'm not wearing jammies. There... <laughs> the Lord will often take those of us who feel like we uh, have no purpose or who have devoted our lives to another purpose, opposing his will. And uh, he uses those of us, those cracked and broken vessels to carry forth his word and his plan so that none can say, oh, it's only because this guy was so smart mm -hmm. or so strong or so handsome or whatever. He uses the least of us to accomplish his ends. We have a wonderful friend, Chris Peluso. Mary uh, McGann Peluso is his wife. Great singer who um, everybody knows who she is. She's been singing for a long time. Well, he takes broken pieces and puts them together in a brand new uh, shape, a brand new uh, uh, glass yes. creation. And they're prettier that, and they're more expensive. Yes, 
Oh, yeah, they're yeah. expensive. And, and, These are, one of those went to the White House. Y- yes, yes, uh, in the previous administration, in case you're wondering. Yeah. But, um, yeah, and that, that hit close to home because there's a tradition of glass blowing in my family. My oh, yeah. great-grandfather, yeah. great-great-grandfather, and probably generations prior to them, uh, back in Finland and Sweden, were glass blowers. And so uh, seeing what can be done with what would normally be discarded and thrown away is just really... Remarkable, but it's also instructive and illustrative. This is the Lord we serve. He throws no one away. All we have to do is be willing to say, yes, Lord, here I am. Send me. And, that, uh, you, were just, well, you and I were just talking about that this morning. It's, the Lord has enabled us to find a number of really interesting uh, discoveries in Scripture. And it isn't because you and I are the best scholars in the world. It's none of that. It's because we're willing. That is it. If you say, yes, here am I, Lord, send me, he'll send you. Mm -hmm. It may not always be in the direction you thought you would go, because Derek and I had different plans when we were younger, but I wouldn't change my life for anything. (laughs) Neither would I. Boy, this is so cool. And I'll tell you, um, the things that we are learning as we've been unpacking and unraveling the uh, prophetic scriptures that we call the book of Revelation, but it all, it's throughout the Bible, all of it. You have to go back to Genesis as we did nearly three years ago Mm -hmm. when we began this journey. But today we're finally getting to a topic that I think because of what's going on over the last two years has been uppermost in the minds of many who follow Bible prophecy, and that is the Mark of the Beast. Absolutely. We uh, are going to get to that. And uh, also uh, another topic that I think may take up this whole program and it may push oh, the no, mark back to another week. Oh, no, we're going to push off the mark another yeah, week? Yeah, un- perhaps another week. But they're kind of tied together. And this is all wrapped into the study of who the beast is, the Antichrist, who is the second beast. We talked about uh, that entity mm-hmm. uh, over the last couple of weeks. But... He's given an interesting power as we read in Revelation 13, beginning at, I'm going to start at verse 13. This is talking now about the false prophet, the second beast that emerges from the earth. It performs great signs, even making fire come down from heaven to earth in front of people. Again, a mockery or a copy of what the prophet Elijah did on Mount Carmel, or rather what God did through the prophet Elijah on Mount Carmel. And by the signs that it is allowed to work in the presence of the beast, it deceives those who dwell on earth, telling them to make an image for the beast that was wounded by the sword and yet lived. Verse 14, is that what you said? That was verse 14 okay. there. Verse 15. Let me start back at, um, start back at 11. Okay. Pick up that whole thread. All right. Then I saw another beast rising out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, and it spoke like a dragon. It exercises all the authority of the first beast in its presence and makes the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, whose mortal wound was healed. It performs great signs, even making fire come down from heaven to earth in front of people. And by the signs that it is allowed to work in the presence of the beast, again, it is allowed to work. Yeah. Um, And by the signs that it is allowed to work in the presence of the beast, it deceives those who dwell on earth, telling them to make an image for the beast that was wounded by the sword and yet lived." Now, here's where we're going to focus this week. And it was allowed to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast might even speak and might cause those who would not worship the image of the beast to be slain. Now, the image of the beast, what exactly is that? This is another topic in the book of Revelation, another biblical topic that has puzzled scholars and been debated and studied and for 2,000 years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and everybody has a particular viewpoint, and I know when I was studying as a child, and I do mean child, I started when I was nine, um, there was a particular way of looking at it in the very conservative churches um, that I think you and I are discovering there's good stuff there, and there's other stuff that maybe can be improved upon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll say it that way. A, a lot of what we have learned, and I, I'm, I'm guilty of this myself, is has been sort of absorbed through <laughs> an osmosis-like process, just so, sort of soaking in pop culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, things that I thought were in the Bible um, turn out not to be. Well, and, uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's like, you know, getting, getting your... your uh, understanding of the exodus from the movie with charlton heston it's 
<laughs> not quite what's in the Bible. It's not like that. No. Huh. But but a couple of the words that are really intriguing here, the word breath, it's allowed to give breath to the image of the beast. The word is pneuma, mm-hmm. which is... Is the basis of our word pneumonia. Yes. and um, but, but it refers to something that is more like the Holy Spirit. That That is correct. That That is exactly right. In... The Dictionary of Deities and Demons in the Bible. When you, you click on the word breath and the Logos Bible software uh-huh. that I use on my tablet here, it brings up the, the entry for Holy Spirit. So it's giving some form of life to the image of the beast. Now the image... This is not the Holy Spirit. No, though. no, no. This is the false spirit. This is an unholy spirit. Right, right. This would be one of these uh, lying signs and wonders that it's mm-hmm. performing. But the word... Translated image is a word that you've done a presentation on. Uh-huh. Icon. Yes. Oh, yeah. And this is, of course, the word from which we get icon and iconography, uh, the, the, uh, a picture or representation of something that represents something else. Well, it's something that's worshipped in the Eastern Orthodox Church. Yes. Icons are paintings of saints or of Jesus and you, or of Mary, and you literally worship them. So what is then meant by the image of the beast. Clearly, it would not be a painting because how do you give breath or spirit to an image, to a painting? Well, there was a time when it was thought that, okay, now it's films Mm -hmm. because you have moving pictures that that can speak when talkies came in. Boy, am I aging myself. No, I wasn't around when talkies started. It was right after that. (laughs) But then television came along, and television by many very conservative fundamental churches was uh, banned because it was thought to be of the devil. Mm -hmm. Then video games came along, and then the internet, and now the internet, and holograms, and there is so much tech out there, metaverse, multiverse, um, you can just about name any emerging technology that deals with imagery and it's getting closer and closer to reality. Yeah, yeah. We've seen holograms used by, mm-hmm. uh, to, to uh, put a, a performer or a politician in a room where they, would, mm-hmm. where they are not actually there. A three-dimensional image. Uh, very famously, Turkish President uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan mm-hmm. did this for a party meeting some years ago. They've done this with Michael Jackson mm-hmm. after his passing. Um, They've done it others. with quite a number, including anime characters who are yes. thought to be very famous performers. Right. They give concerts. A pop star in, um, is in it Japan. Korea or Japan? Japan? Japan is actually a hologram. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, the, but here's the other thing. One of the stories that I think you talked about on a recent 5 and 10 is that, was it Google that just bought a company that specializes in AR conversations? It, yeah. it will allow, if you are, say, in another country, I can have you sitting in that chair so I can talk to you. Augmented reality, yeah. But my question to Derek that morning as we looked at the story was, at what point do they say, now you can talk to dead grandma? Yeah, yeah. And that was one of the themes explored in that prequel to the rebooted Battlestar Galactica, mm-hmm. uh, Caprica, where... Uh, Which is were, not something you want to watch with your kids. No, it no. It's very adult very in violent certain areas. And, yeah. But some of the characters, a couple of the characters who'd suffered personal loss, the loss of a family member, went into a, a virtual reality setting where they could interact with a uh, an avatar representing their lost daughter or uh, friend or, or mm-hmm. what have you. And that is certainly a temptation. There, there are people who, in today's world with the technology we have, will take a beloved pet and have it cloned so they can have their dog continue on with them long mm-hmm. past the dog's lifespan, the original pet's lifespan. How much more would a grieving parent pay for a virtual, even an augmented reality where you put on a pair of glasses and suddenly your child Mm -hmm. who's been taken too soon will appear and speak to you. Well, do you remember, you're probably not old enough to remember this, but there was a time when it was very early technology to put photographs on um, tombstones, headstones. 
and they were etched in originally, and then they were actually put in in color. And uh, um, what if you walk up and your AR glasses allow you to interact with a receiver, a button of some kind, on the headstone, or inside of a huge space that's for nothing but virtual burials, and you get to talk to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, take that and extrapolate out to where the technology might go, and um, what kind of a deception could be worked on a global scale by one who is perceived to have miraculously recovered from the dead mm -hmm. um, and, and uh, is, is welcomed and heralded as the savior of the world for bringing the earth out of a, a crisis of some sort. Mm -hmm. Well, you and I have said many, many times on Sci Friday, which, by the way, we are once again uh, recording Sci Fridays. We have said that if it is in the news and it's emerging technology, especially if it's the government announcing it, you can bet that that technology has been around for decades. So what you and I know is available today mm -hmm. is probably just the tip of the probability iceberg. In other words, somewhere it's being uh, tried out that grandma is there, and not only is she a hologram, she might even be what's called a hard hologram. You can actually ah. interact with mm -hmm. her. Mm -hmm. Well, th there's some interesting, I think... Um, which gets into a whole different can of worms, yeah. spiritually speaking. Exactly. Um, so let's continue that. And I, I also want to look at where else oh, no, this word is used, <laughs> where the wor else the word is used in the New Testament. The word image, as in the image of the beast, appears most frequently in the book of Revelation, but it does appear elsewhere in the New Testament. How and where is it used and what conclusions can we draw from that? Unraveling Revelation continues after this. This program is an outreach of Gilbert House Ministries, one of the ways we share the hope that we have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Each week, we produce Unraveling Revelation, a study of Bible prophecy from Genesis to Revelation, Sci Friday, a look at science news through a biblical lens, our weekly study of the Bible, the Gilbert House Fellowship, as we go through the Bible verse by verse in chronological order, and my podcast, A View from the Bunker, and we rely on your support. There are two ways you can join us in this mission. First and foremost, your prayers. We truly and deeply appreciate your prayerful support. And if you are led to help us financially, you can do that two ways. First, you can donate through a link at our website, gilberthouse.org. Second, you can visit our online shop, a sort of virtual book table where you'll find our books and DVDs. Just click the link at gilberthouse.org or scan the QR code on your screen. And during the month of May, save 20% on all DVDs with the promo code MAY20. That's MAY20. Again, thank you for your prayers and thank you for your support. Welcome back to Unraveling Revelation. I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Sharon Gilbert. Got my, uh, my, my feet bare. <laughs> But uh, we want to thank you. Get your tea. Get your, get you know. Invite us into your home. Relax for a little while. Uh, really quickly, I just really want to thank. I'm not going to name you, but it was a wonderful lady who sent me a number of gifts, and I just got. You can see it on the table here. Some goat soap, goat milk soap, and I love goat milk soap. And there's even a beautiful little soap dish that you made to go along with it. So thank you for your kindness. Thank you also, Libby, who you've sent me a number of uh, wonderful little notes. Should, should we reveal the, we won't tell the last name, but the the person who sent me this, the note, um, you've also sent us other things that you've made. That there's a wonderful little, I think they're out of the shot, but it's a communion uh, a pair of communion cups. Mm -hmm. So thank you for being so thoughtful. Thank yes. you, too, for everyone who has been helping us out, who's gone to gilberthouse.org, and you have uh, interacted with our new store where you can get 20% off our DVDs all the month of May. Just type in May 20, May 20, yes. at checkout. Yes, and again, thank you, Catherine. Oh, Catherine, you're so sweet. I could not remember the name, so I'm a goof. Um, <laughs> we want to remind you, too, that we're going to Turkey in October of this year. Go to skywatchinturkey.com. Or if you plan on going to Israel with us next year but you haven't registered yet, go to skywatchinisrael.com. The brand new itinerary is 
there. Oh, yes. Some new sites that we have not seen on previous tours, so we're very excited about Mm -hmm. that. Hey, did I tell you we got an email the other day from uh, uh, a person in in Sweden who wants to come with two relatives from Jordan with us to Turkey. So, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so well, it's International Day. It is. So we're, we are blessed. So thank you. That. Thank you for your interest. This will be one, uh, both of these tours of archaeolo- archaeological interest, but also from a biblical perspective. So much. And we yeah. just thank the Lord for allowing us to go. So we pray that we can meet you in the Holy Land. Mm. Um, yeah, boy, iconography. So the word image in the New Testament is used in a number of places. Icon, Again, E-I-K-O-N. Fre- right used most frequently in the book of Revelation, but it w- also appears in the Gospels where Jesus takes the coin with the image of mm-hmm. Caesar on it, whose likeness and inscription is this. That's in Matthew, Mark, Luke. Um, in Romans chapter 1, they exchange the glory of the immortal God for images representing mortal man and birds and image animals and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies amongst themselves, and so forth. They traded the glory of God for images, for icons, Mm -hmm. representing mortal man and birds and so forth. Um, You and I are going to talk about that idea of images, by the way, when we get into our uh, DEF CON, the DEF Fender conference uh, recording later Mm -hmm. on, because... Much of what I have to talk about is based on iconography. Right. And that that's the thing, because based on those first couple of appearances of the word icon, you would think that it's just, okay, it's just a, an image or a picture representing something. But that's not so, because we get to Romans 8.29, and Paul writes this, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, oh. in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. This goes back to Genesis. And it goes back to Mike Heiser's teaching that you and I, humanity, we are God's imagers on earth. Let us create man in our image. Mm -hmm. We are his image bearers, in other words. We are his moral agents on earth. That, I think, is what's in view here. Not necessarily a picture or a hologram or a, a, a VR creation, but one who bears the image, carries the the moral and and authority authority right of the one whom you serve first uh, corinthians 11 for a man ought not to cover his head since he is the image and glory of god again that doesn't mean that god look we don't know what god the father uh-huh. looks like but i'm pretty sure that he's not a guy about six foot tall <laughs> probably not no no we want to anthropomorphize him but right right he is a spirit First Corinthians fifteen forty nine. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, Adam, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. Oh, that is good. Now here's the thing: the enemy, Satan, the beast, this conglomo bunch of of rebels in the final hours of this world as we know it, before Christ's return, they want just as in the pre-flood world. They want to turn the Adamic race into imagers of them, yes, yes. not imagers of the Lord. And that's what's in view in Revelation 13. Mm-hmm. We see it again as uh, we continue in Colossians 1.15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Colossians 3.10, have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator, God. Again, this word image doesn't mean a picture or representation. It is everything that God represents. We represent. We are his ambassadors. Mm -hmm. We are ambassadors for our king. We bear his image in that regard. And that is what I think uh, John was describing in Revelation 13. Colossians, uh, Hebrews 10, verse 1, since the law has but a shadow of the good things to come instead of the true form of these realities. Again, it can't be a picture. How do you draw a picture or an image of the law? The English word image doesn't convey the true sense of what the apostles were trying to write here. No, the language is so rich in the original languages, the Bible is, but we, in English, we limit it. Colossians 3, taking it in context, Colossians 3, verse 9, 
Do not lie to one another, seeing that you've put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, Mm -hmm. but Christ is all and in all. That's the image of God, his representatives here on earth. And what John is writing about in the book of Revelation is about the imagers of the beast, the Antichrist. Yes. Well, we've talked about this before. The Antichrist, he is pretending to be Christ. He is pretending to be our Lord and Savior. He's not, but he's going to do everything in imitation of that, and he'll usually flip it. Mm -hmm. So he wants us to be his imagers. He's going to pretend to be the king. He's not the real king, but he's going to take that place temporarily. He's going to use the world system to create a false body. Right. We are part of the body of Christ. There, the the the, the uh, Antichrist is the head of a an antibody. Yes. That is forming even now across the world. I, I think you've hit on it right there. This is the beast system. I think is what we would call the image of the beast, because Mm -hmm. it's not just an animated representation of the Antichrist. It is something much more than that. We can kind of triangulate on the sense by looking at the way that word is used elsewhere in the New Testament. What does it mean specifically? I don't know. We'll find out when we get there. But when we are told, and I pray that we're not here, we don't think as pre-tribulation believers, we don't believe we'll be here when all of this takes place. We trust in the Lord to to, uh, see us through no matter what. Exactly. Whoever is here at that time will Mm -hmm. know that this is the image of the beast when they are told you must worship it or you're in big, big trouble. And of course, that ties into our next discussion, which will be about the mark, because these two things are tied together. Worshiping the image of the beast and the mark are linked together. Oh my gosh, you do not want to miss that. And uh, we, we just really appreciate that many of you are watching this with your family You're watching these programs from the very beginning. And if you've been watching and you have friends that are asking, hey, where is this? Where did Unraveling Revelation go? We're now solely on Unraveling uh, Unraveling Revelation.tv. We are on the Gilbert House app. We are linked at Facebook. We are linked at gilberthouse.org. Also, youtube.com slash Unraveling Revelation. So we're still around. It's just that uh, the Skywatch app is sort of starting to change things around a little bit. Mm -hmm. You and I are still part of Skywatch TV. They are not getting rid of us. (laughs) We love working with Tom Horn. And we continue and will continue until the Lord calls us home. Amen to that. And we love the fact that you're on this journey with us. Thank you so much for watching. This is Unraveling Revelation. Unraveling Revelation is a viewer-supported outreach of Gilbert House Ministries. We'd love to hear from you. Contact us through our websites or drop us a line at P.O. Box 78, Crane, Missouri, 65633. 